So there's a number of reasons you might overseed your lawn. Maybe you need to fill in some spots that you did work to, or maybe your grass is thin and patchy, or maybe you just want to add a new cultivar into the lawn. This is something that a lot of beginners are intimidated by, but it's really not a hard process. And it can really take your lawn to the next level in a very short amount of time. So today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know on how to successfully overseed your lawn in 2022. The first step in any overseed is planning and determining what type of cultivar or grass seed that you're going to use in your lawn because this is gonna determine how much seed that you need for your size lawn. One pound of tall fescue does not go as far as one pound of Kentucky bluegrass because of the size of the seeds themselves. It will also determine how much work your lawn is gonna need moving forward because some types of grass require more work and more attention than others in the summer. For instance, a Kentucky bluegrass lawn is gonna require a lot more work, a lot more water and attention than something like a tall fescue is. But a benefit of a Kentucky bluegrass is that it self heals. So if you get a dog pee damage spot and you clean that out, that Kentucky bluegrass on its own is gonna fill that in with rhizomes and you're never gonna know it was there. Tall fescue doesn't do that, except for with a few exceptions of lateral spreading fescue, that if you get a damaged spot, you're gonna to have to reseed that and regrow it unless you use a lateral spreading tall fescue that spreads like Kentucky bluegrass, just not as quickly. So now that you have your seed picked out, it's the perfect time to do a soil test. And what a soil test is, is where you take small cores from different sections of your lawn and send it into a lab to get analyzed. And the results of these tests will tell you exactly what's in the soil so you know what to put down and what not to put down. There's lots of places that you can send these cores to, places like Waypoint Analytical, Logan's Lab, Yard Mastery has their own soil test kit uh, through My Soil that you just send directly into them, and they give you all those results right on the app. So the next step in your overseed is starting to cut your grass lower. Every week you cut, take your mower one step down than what you had it before, and your goal should be to end up roughly right around two inches of height. I go one step below that to 1.75 when I overseed, but two inches is a good overall number. You wanna make sure that you're bagging when you're doing this. You don't wanna mulch or side discharge because it's just gonna create more work in our next steps on making a clean path for the seed to get to the soil. So now that we have the grass down to the height that we want it to be, the next step is dethatching. And you can do this either with a battery powered or an electric dethatcher or a power rake. You can use a hand thatching rake or you can contract this service out to someone local near you. But after your dethatch is completed, you want to clean up all of the debris that's left. And I like to go back and I like to mow one more time after I clean all that up, bagging with the lawnmower at the same height that we did previously but just to clean up any loose debris that was there. What this does is this creates a direct path to the soil that's not obstructed by any type of debris because we have to get the seed directly to the soil if it's gonna germinate correctly. After I dethatch and I have everything cleaned, this is when I get the lawn aerated. And aerating is kind of like just what we did with our soil test, but on a much larger scale. I contract this out to a service. You can also do this with a manual core aerator but it's a very intense job as you're only covering one row of four prongs at a time. So what aerating is doing is it's creating a direct path for all the water, the air, and the nutrients, and the seed to get directly down into the soil and the root zone of the existing grass. This really speeds up the process of getting those nutrients in that water to the plant to where it needs it to be. Directly after aerating is also an excellent time to put down any biostimulants or pH adjustments that you need based off of the soil test that you did. This will be the absolute perfect time to put all of those down. The cores from aerating will also sit on the top of the soil, giving the seed another location to attach to to help grow because seed to soil contact is the most important thing when it comes to overseeding. Now it's time to put down our seed and we're gonna use the same broadcast spreader that we do for our fertilizer that we're gonna use for seed. The only exception to this is if you have a drop spreader, which will drop seed directly down out of the bottom of the broadcast spreader. And this is really good for areas around flower beds and around trees that have flowers or mulch around them and you don't wanna throw seed into those areas. That is where this works great. You wanna make sure that you're reading the back of the bag so you get the settings for your spreader accurate so you're getting even coverage across your entire lawn. You wanna use north and south passes to cover your entire lawn and then do it again a second time with the same seed in an east and west. This ensures a 100% even coverage of seed so you don't end up with bare spots or overly crowded areas with new seed. 
After all the seed is down, now it's time for our starter fertilizer. And a starter fertilizer has a specific analysis for growing new seed. Normally you'll see it as a 12-12-12 like you see on Yard Mastery, but some Scott's fertilizers you'll see much higher nitrogen than the others. And what those are doing is those are giving that new seed all of the energy it could possibly need to germinate and grow as quickly as possible. My suggestion for most beginners is to use the Scott's Triple Action Built for Seed Starter Fertilizer because this has the same mate ingredient as Tenacity. And what Tenacity is, is it is a pre and post emergent that you can put on top of brand new seed and it will not stop the germination like a pre emergent would. Tenacity will stop weed seeds from germinating and it will kill existing weeds, but it will not inhibit the growth and the germination of the new grass seed. So that is part of the makeup of the Scott's Triple Action built for seed. So that's what I would suggest most beginners use. If that's not something you wanna use and you wanna go a little more advanced route, you can get a normal starter fertilizer and as well as you can buy a bottle of Tenacity and you can blanket spray all of that and that will do the same thing, just with extra steps. So now that we have the seed down and the starter fertilizer down, this is when I like to put down my RGS root growth stimulators or my humic acids or my micro boosters something that I'm feeding the soil and not the plant. This is the step that I like to do because we have to water it in. So I like to put everything down and then water it all in together. You're gonna to wanna to cover your seed with some type of a product, whether it to be to keep out birds or keep it from washing away if it rains, or if you wanna put something down like a peat moss that's gonna help keep the soil and the new seed moist, because that's the name of the game. We have to keep the new seed moist or it's not gonna make it through germination. This is the perfect time to put down hydrotain as well. What hydrotain is, is a super polymer absorbent. Think of it as a liquid version of what's inside of a diaper. When it comes in contact with water, it attaches itself to that water. And how this works is, once you spray it and you water it in, it attaches itself to the root of the grass at a molecular level. And at the other end of that molecule, it actively grabs water molecules out of the humidity and the air in the soil, keeping the root wet longer, requiring less watering. So now we're to the point of where we need to start watering our seed. And normally you're gonna water your seed three times a day for six to 10 minutes at a time. Now your situation and your specific location may vary, but this is a baseline that you can go off of and modify for your specific location. I like to water my grass at 8 a.m., 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. for six to 10 minutes at a time. If it's abnormally hot one day, I will water it a fourth time in the afternoon, maybe at four o'clock, but I won't go past that. Once the new seed gets to roughly three inches, I'll mow it for the first time just to take off the tip, just to see how it feels. And after that, I will go back to my deep and infrequent watering of two times a week, maybe three if it's very hot for a much longer time to where I'm putting down an inch to an inch and a half of water a week, depending on the temperature. And that's it, everything you need to know about overseeding your lawn in 2022. If you follow these steps, you will have a successful overseed and your lawn will look amazing and like a completely different yard and it will be the envy of the neighborhood. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or shoot me a message over on Instagram. I'm very active over there. So anything you guys need, shoot me a message and I'll do my best to help. Thanks guys.